Hey, what's up? It's your boy Willie Chin, and I am running out of storage. This is my file cabinet, and we need to do something about that. Today, I am building my DIY NAS, Network Attached Storage. So this is basically a hard drive that you can access on your home network. You do have the options to purchase a pre-built one. In my case, I had an old computer sitting around, so I decided to turn that into a NAS. Let's get right into it. Here are the items that you're gonna need. First, you're gonna need a computer with enough hard drive bays, a jump drive to run your operating system, hard drives, preferably NAS storage drives, optional SSD drive to use as a cache drive. The software I'm gonna use for my NAS server is Unraid. This is a paid software. The benefits of using Unraid is that one, I could build my own NAS computer. Two, I don't have to use all the same hard drive sizes. And three, the beauty of it, I can always add more hard drives as I go without having to redo the entire system. Now that we have all our items, let me walk you through the setup. Let's go to unraid.net. I'm gonna start with a free trial before I buy. Download for your operating system. Open it. All right, now click the DMG file. Click and drag it into your applications folder. Right, make sure your USB stick is plugged into your computer. All right, go into your applications folder. Now click Unraid USB Creator. Now that we have all our items, let me walk you through the setup. I'm gonna leave everything at default. You can change your server name if you like. Now select your flash USB drive. Click right, erase and write. Now just wait. Now that the USB drive is complete, let's plug that into the NAS computer. As well as make sure your computer is connected to your network. Turn on your computer and while it's booting up, go into your BIOS. I'm gonna click delete to go into my BIOS. Yours might be different. Once you're inside your BIOS, look for boot options. You're gonna set the boot option number one to USB. And just save and exit. The computer will restart and now you're greeted with this blue screen. You can click enter or it will automatically boot by itself. Let it do its thing. If done correctly, you're gonna see this IP address. Yours might be different. Now let's go to our computer, type in that IP address into the browser. Logging in for the first time, you're gonna have to create a password. Now let's set up the drives. First is the parity drive. One drive is gonna be completely used for the parity drive. So you're not gonna be able to access any data on this drive, but this drive is gonna keep your data safe because it's a snapshot of your data. So if one of your drives fail, the parity drive will be there to rebuild the data on that drive. Now select your other drives, select all of them except the SSD. So I'm gonna use my SSD as a cache drive. So this is a faster read and write drive. I'm gonna use this as my work drive. I'm not sure how it was intended to be used, but that's my purpose of using it. Now come down to pool devices, add pool, scroll down again, select your SSD. Now click start. It's gonna tell you that your hard drive is gonna be erased. Proceed. Now it's gonna tell you that your drives are unmountable. We're gonna to have to format those drives. So under format, click this button, click okay. Click Format. It should automatically start building your parity drive. This part is gonna take a long time for your parity drive to build. This process took me about 20 hours. So just be prepared to leave your computer for a while before you can actually start using it. 20 hours later. Let's go to our Settings tab. Network Settings. You have to stop your array to make these changes. So just go to your Main tab, click Stop. Let's go back to our settings, click network. So what you wanna do now is change your IP address from automatic to static. By doing this, you'll have the same IP address every single time. That way, when you're logging in, you won't have any problems. Once we're done with that, let's go back to the main tab and start the array. We're almost complete now. To see the folders on your network from other devices, we're gonna have to set up some share folders. I like to set up my users first. Let's do that. You could add as many users as you want. I'm just gonna add one for right now. Go to user tab, click add user, give them a name and a password. Now we're gonna create folders that we can see on our network. Now let's go to our shares tab, click add share, give it a name, and you can leave everything at default. Click done. Now scroll down, there's more options. Set to yes to see the folder on the network. Set this to secure. 
scroll down again. Now we can set the user access permissions. Now we're gonna do the same process to set up my cache drive or my work drive. Let's go again, shares folder, add, give it a name, primary storage type. This time we're gonna select cache, secondary storage. We're gonna choose array, add share, scroll down again, set to yes to see the folder on the network, set this to secure and set your permissions. Now we're all set up, we can go to the computer and access our folders. This is how you access your folders on a PC. Click this folder icon to your left side, click network and just look for your server name. Double click on it, enter your credentials and click OK. And now you can view all the folders you have access to. This is how you access the NAS on a Mac. All right, on your desktop screen, press command K. You're gonna type in smb colon slash slash and the IP address of your NAS. Click connect. I have my credentials saved, but it's the same username and password you created earlier. And then you click whatever shared folder you have access to. Another way you can do it is click on your Mac hard drive icon. Come to the left side, look for a network. Double click on your server name. It's going to ask you to connect. This is where you'd actually get the login screen again. And then you have access to your shared folders. Now I'm gonna drag a few files to my NAS and I'm gonna do an edit on there and test it out. What's pretty cool, I'm actually editing this video from the hard drives on the NAS and it's working pretty good. Final thoughts, it wasn't that difficult setting this up. It just took a long time to build that parity drive but once it got there, it was super easy. Also, I'm amazed that I could edit on the one gigabit network, that's crazy. Oh man, this is gonna save me a lot of time, a lot of hard drive space. All right, the next thing that I love is the option to add more hard drives in the future. Once I fill these hard drives up, I have the option to add more hard drives. So that is a win-win-win for this situation. The only thing I dislike is probably the form factor of me building my own NAS versus buying a purchase NAS is the size. This is a larger system, but I'm gonna have this in a different room, so it's not gonna bother me as much. Overall, 100% happy with this build. Well, that's it. My name is Willie Chin. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. If you have any suggestions for me, leave it in the comments below. And don't forget to log on to soundboypro.com. Come on.